Uh, praise the Lord, people. Praise the Lord. It's just a few minutes after 9 o'clock here in Colorado on a Wednesday night. Uh, I just heard the president speak, and I thought I would come here and share uh, his message. And then I'm going to share a message coming from Lois Shaw from last night. And, uh, you know, sometimes I don't show certain people, but when I hear people speak about truth, about things I really believe, I would share it sometime occasionally, so I'm going to share her video. Uh, she's talking about what the Lord gave her about Trump yesterday, and then he had a speech today, and he mentioned about $50 billion. Oh, my goodness, people. I don't know. But I'm going to let you hear Lord Shop message, and then I'm going to go to the Bible and end this video at Romans 8. And I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read Romans 8, 12 to 38, and so... Uh, that's what I'm going to do for this afternoon here, this evening. Uh, just wanted to get this out to you because we need to be praying for America, praying for the nations, praying for your households. And I was out today, me and my husband was out today, um, and the grocery stores, uh, I know this one we, we particular shop at, uh, Walmart is cleared out already. I've heard other people in my neighborhood talking about Walmart don't have tissue paper and uh, so we went to this other store. It do not have tissue paper. Uh, we was, uh, was trying to get some, and we just going to decide to order some later. But I'm telling you, if you haven't shopped by now, if you haven't shopped by now, you may be in for a shock because things are moving out of the aisles very quickly. So if you haven't got water, food, canned goods, and all these things you need to be getting, people, it's time to do it. Tonight, midnight, go out to the 24-hour stores. But you need to get it in your household because we don't know what can happen in the next few days. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let you hear the Trump uh, Trump seven-minute message, and then I'm going to let you hear Lois Shop, and then I'm going to get to the Bible, and that's that'll be all I'm going to do for the night video. I just wasn't even planning to do a video today, actually, because I went shopping, and I have a lot of things I'm working on, but I have to get this out to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and play it right now over to here uh, let me go on over here and find these uh this message and uh, let you hear it mute it out <clears throat> and then I'm gonna get into the little shop right after so World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic we have been in frequent contact with our allies and we are marshaling the full power of the federal government and the private sector to protect the American people. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. I am confident that by counting and continuing to take these tough measures, we will significantly reduce the threat to our citizens, and we will ultimately and expeditiously defeat this virus. From the beginning of time, nations and people have faced unforeseen challenges, including large-scale and very dangerous health threats. This is the way it always was and always will be. It only matters how you respond, and we are responding with great speed and professionalism. Our team is the best anywhere in the world. At the very start of the outbreak, we instituted sweeping travel restrictions on China and put in place the first federally mandated quarantine in over 50 years. We declared a public health emergency and issued the highest level of travel warning on other countries as the virus spread its horrible infection. And taking early, intense action, we have seen dramatically fewer cases of the virus in the United States than are now present in Europe. The European Union failed to take the same precautions and restrict travel from China and other hotspots. As a result, a large number of new clusters in the United States were seeded by travelers from Europe. After consulting with our top government health professionals, I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans, to keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. These restrictions will be adjusted subject to conditions on the ground. There will be exemptions for Americans who have undergone appropriate screenings 
and these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things as we get approval. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. These restrictions will also not apply to the United Kingdom. At the same time, we are monitoring the situation in China and the South Korea. And as their situation improves, we will reevaluate the restrictions and warnings that are currently in place for a possible early opening. Earlier this week, I met with the leaders of health insurance industry who have agreed to waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments, extend insurance coverage to these treatments, and to prevent surprise medical billing. We are cutting massive amounts of red tape to make antiviral therapies available in record time. These treatments will significantly reduce the impact and reach of the virus. Additionally, last week I signed into law an $8.3 billion funding bill to help CDC and other government agencies fight the virus and support vaccines, treatments, and distribution of medical supplies. Testing and testing capabilities are expanding rapidly day by day. We are moving very quickly. The vast majority of Americans, the risk is very, very low. Young and healthy people can expect to recover fully and quickly if they should get the virus. The highest risk is for elderly population with underlying health conditions. The elderly population must be very, very careful. In particular, we are strongly advising that nursing homes for the elderly suspend all medically unnecessary visits. In general, older Americans should also avoid non-essential travel in crowded areas. My administration is coordinating directly with communities with largest outbreaks, and we have issued guidance on school closures, social distancing, and reducing large gatherings. Smart action today will prevent the spread of the virus tomorrow. Every community faces different risks, and it is critical for you to follow the guidelines of your local officials who are working closely with our federal health experts, and they are the best. For all Americans, it is essential that everyone take extra precautions and practice good hygiene. Each of us has a role to play in defeating this virus. Wash your hands, clean often used surfaces, cover your face and mouth if you sneeze or cough, and most of all, if you are sick or not feeling well, stay home. To ensure that working Americans impacted by the virus can stay home without fear of financial hardship, I will soon be taking emergency action, which is unprecedented, to provide financial relief. This will be targeted for workers who are ill, quarantined, or caring for others due to coronavirus. I will be asking Congress to take legislative action to extend this relief. Because of the economic policies that we have put into place over the last three years, we have the greatest economy anywhere in the world by far. Our banks and financial institutions are fully capitalized and incredibly strong. Our unemployment is at a historic low. This vast economic prosperity gives us flexibility, reserves, and resources to handle any threat that comes our way. This is not a financial crisis. This is just a temporary moment of time that we will overcome together as a nation and as a world. However, to provide extra support for American workers, families, and businesses, tonight I am announcing the following additional actions. I am instructing the Small Business Administration to exercise available authority to provide capital and liquidity to firms affected by the coronavirus. Effective immediately, the SBA will begin providing economic loans in affected states and territories. These low-interest loans will help small businesses overcome temporary economic disruptions caused by the virus. To this end, I am asking Congress to increase funding for this program by an additional $50 billion. Using emergency authority, I will be instructing the Treasury Department to defer tax payments without interest or penalties for certain individuals and businesses 
negatively impacted. This action will provide more than $200 billion of additional liquidity to the economy. Finally, I am calling on Congress to provide Americans with immediate payroll tax relief. Hopefully, they will consider this very strongly. We are at a critical time in the fight against the virus. Russell Sharp, today's March 10th, 2020. And believe it or not, I was walking across my room and it just came down and hit me in my spirit that God wanted me to go write something. So let me just say a quick prayer and then I'll read what he said, what he says. Father, we come to you in humility. We ask for your guidance and your direction. Father, things are so chaotic right now and up in the air with this virus and, and the stocks going up and down. and we, It's like we don't even know what's going to happen next. But you do. You have everything in control and you have everything planned for your purposes. So we ask you to show us clearly, Father. Um, I pray for our president, Father, that he would see clearly. You said some things about him and I pray that he sees clearly through the fog that's trying to block his view of what he's supposed to do. We rebuke the coronavirus, we rebuke Ebola, we rebuke the flus, we rebuke everything, Father, that is not from you. But we know you use all things for your purpose and your glory. So we pray in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name, and we thank you for hearing our prayer, Father. So this is what I got. I got this at 432 today. I stopped Lois in her tracks to tell you this message coming right from my throne. If you do not stop trying to fix this market and your economy taking this hit, you will deal with my wrath even stronger than you know. You, Mr. President, are spending money that you know is not there. And the bubble has burst, and now you are trying to take more money out of thin air and make it all work. If you would fall to your knees in humility instead of trying to save your face in all this, I would lighten this load. You are fighting my will, Mr. President, and you have no idea that you are. Take a moment and see why all this is happening, and you do not have the power to stop it. Must I now step in and allow a natural disaster to take place to save, shake your country to her knees? Let things play out and pray for my will, not your saving your face in all this. None of this has anything to do with you. It is judgment on a land that continues to murder my babies and is looking to be great. You have no idea how offensive this is to me because your concentration is on winning the election again and you fear a crash will make it harder for you to win when in fact it will make you rise up for you will implement gold and silver to help save America. Get out of yourself and you're saying a make America great again and keep America great and see the abominations in my sight. You answer to me, Mr. President, not the people. I see your heart of love for country. Take some of that and look at me and love me and my values. It is time. The bubble bursts and you cannot take the balloon. Up and down the stocks make me frown. Do not take money that does not exist and rub it together like two sticks. The fire will not start for it is not hot. And if you want real fire, look to the spirit for he is not a liar. Fix this mess, you cannot, and pride will only make it harder in your blue shirt and collar. I love you, America. Come back to me. This is my plea. Pray for my people that your president sees clearly. Pray, my people, that your president sees clearly through this fog that is truly reality. Pray the fog lifts so the enemy can quit his mission to keep things going when the economy is not glowing. You will see this has been me. Love your father up what in heaven. I don't know, it just came out of nowhere. I just got a download knowing that he wanted to say something. What he what I gather from what he's saying there is that the president is he he now stepped in and he said he's gonna do things to help the people, all right, because of what's going on. And he's pulling money where there is no money to even pull it anymore. They're just printing money. They are loading the stocks every day with billions of dollars to keep this thing 
afloat. So things started going down, and he made a statement today that he was going to do something to help the people again. So the stocks went up again a little bit. He can't fix this mess. Mr. President, God is telling you, you can't fix this mess. It's not your fault. This has been for years and years and years and years. Judgment is finally here on our land. And it has to do with abortion, murdering babies. And until you get that, and you start making moves to overturn Roe versus Wade, and actually get a law in motion that is against our Constitution, the murdering of babies, judgment is upon America and the world. This comes from God. And nobody can fix it except the blessings come back on our country. He's trying to stop it. He's been trying to stop it. They're doing quantitative easing. They're doing everything they could possibly do to make it look good on the outside when in fact things are tumbling and crashing. You will see the manifestation of all this. Now he made a statement, a natural disaster. Now that's got me a little concerned here. What do we have to do now, deal with an earthquake? Or a volcano going off to make people start to think instead of acting like everything's good to go. The president will not stand before the American people and tell us the truth. I'm not calling the man a liar, but he will not stand there and tell us what's really going down the pike because he knows that it's going to disrupt and panic will set in. So he's keeping his mouth shut, and he's making deals. You see, he calls himself the art of the deal person. So he's making deals. Well, I'm going to give the people some money back, and it'll help. And so, you know, then they go and they buy some more stocks, you see, because, oh, okay, it's good now. It's, things are going to be good. You know, and then we hear more about the coronavirus, and more people are dying. Now New York State, they have a whole radius now is now quarantined. Nobody can go in, nobody can go out. We're going to have pockets of this all over the country, folks. And if it gets serious enough, martial law will be declared on the whole United States of America. But we pray that that doesn't happen. But I am telling you, we cannot stop this economic woe that's here. It's a judgment. And it's going to take place. God is going to use it to wake America up in her own way and get the Christians to realize the times we are actually in, because many Christians do not see this, and everybody's living their lives like everything's good to go, when in fact there are plagues out there. There are locusts eating up China right now and Africa. I mean, they're actually moving across the continents, consuming everything in their path. That's biblical proportion stuff happening. We've had biblical proportion floods. We've had biblical proportion... Snowstorms, hailstorms, the volcanoes are going off in places, the earth is cracking in places. Nobody's talking about these things because, after all, we're gloomer doomers if we talk about it. Listen, if you know a tornado was going to come to your town, would you want to know it or would you not want to know it? Would you want to prepare? When you hear that a hurricane is heading your way in two days, don't you want to be prepared for it? Well, then somebody has to tell you. Somebody has to be honest enough to tell you the times, how serious they, that we are in. Mm -hmm. The third seal is open. That's the tipping of the scales. It's happening all over the world. It just hasn't hit America hard yet. But it is here. And we're not escaping it either. Just because we're Americans. You think God sits up on his throne and looks down at every baby that never is able to take the breath of life and says it's okay. Let's make America great. Let's keep America great. Tell me, is America really great? When half our country is split down the middle, that we could probably go to civil war tomorrow over that very fact. Fair 
families are going through civil war right now because of it. You know, it hit me last night when I was in prayer. And this is something that we never, we never take this scripture, okay? And I'm not exactly sure where it is. I'd have to look it up to give you the exact verse where it is. But this is what the scripture says. Jesus himself says it. I have not come into the world to bring peace into this world. I have come into this world, and because I came into this world, I have separated families. A mother against her daughter. A brother against his brother. A father against his son. That's what I have done when I came into the world, because not everybody will believe in me. That's what he said. We think that everything's good to go. When in fact, this whole world is in one big disruption because of Jesus, Yeshua, and his message. It's been that way since he came into the world. So much so that they nailed him on the cross and they hated his guts. But those that believed became Christians, which means followers of Jesus. And followers of what he tells us to do and what he tells us not to do. Thou shalt not murder is a commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's a commandment. Thou shalt not steal. That's a commandment. These are things he tells us not to do. So do you really think he's sitting up in heaven and saying, let's bless America and make her great? Are we really great when there's so much hatred out there? And you can't walk down the street and feel safe if you wear a Trump hat on your head because you just might get attacked by somebody, is that really an America that's great? No, that's America that's very, very divided. Our land, folks, is already split. Oh, well, it's going to split and this and that. It already is. It's split spiritually. And that's the biggest split you can possibly have. Yeah, can an earthquake split the land? Absolutely. I actually had a vision of it. I don't think that's yet. These major, major, major things, we still have a little time, I believe. Because I believe the safe haven is going to be ready when that happens. Because people will be running when that happens to a safe zone. If you're in the area of locations where a major earthquake is going to hit and half of California is going to fall into the sea, uh, I think you're going to be running out of there. Believe me. And if you're building safe havens near the coast, you better think about that again. They're not safe zones. If you're building a safe haven right next to, uh, you know, these volcanoes, Mount Rainier, uh-uh, I don't think so. That's not a good place either. They're not safe zones. You gotta be in a safe zone. Away from the coast, when tidal waves hit. I've had dreams of all these things. I've seen, I saw a vision of, of the earthquake going right down the middle of America. I have, I've had dreams of tidal waves coming in. Gary has had many dreams and visions of California being hit by major earthquakes. Now, he's from California, so maybe that's why he's getting them. You know, it's a little bit more of an attachment there for him. I'm from Long Island, and I had this, the one with the tsunami of Long Island. So who knows why God chooses who he chooses to show these things to. You know. But this is what lies ahead, folks. And we need to be prepared for it. And the time of famine, death and famine, that's the fourth seal, folks. Pestilence, famine, this is, that's death, famine. That's the next seal to open. So we're going to be progressing towards that. And as the Josephs, we're the ones that are meant and called by God to build these places and to store the food up for that time frame. Why do you think we're going to look at this dome? We're going tomorrow to look at this dome, keep it in prayer. You know? Oh, by the way, I want to tell you, many of you are asking that. I have all kinds of emails coming in. It's on the last video I put out. Gary yeah, put it up there for you to go and search it out. All right? It's, it's what is it called, Gary? Growing? Growing Spaces. I can never remember this. Growingspaces.com. So I'll tell you right there. Growingspaces.com if you want to go look them up. These domes are made for heavy-duty weather conditions. We can't have the cheapy ones because they'll fall apart. 
You get a little bit of a gust of a wind, there goes your greenhouse. This has been built to withstand heavy, heavy snowstorms, heavy wind conditions, the way it's built and the form of it. We've done research on this. So as far as we can see, it's one of the better ones out there. And that's what we're going to look at. Does it cost more money than throwing up a thing and just putting, you know, plastic stuff around? Absolutely. You get what you pay for. It's that simple. Even um, making things out of the gopher wood, that's layered laminated wood, you know, probably is more money. But you want to be able to withstand some heavy winds. I've had three major dreams about heavy, heavy winds. So these things are going to happen. Pray right now for our president. Those who have been doing the fastings and stuff like that, continue to keep the prayers going and pray that he sees clearly that he has to stop trying to save his own face. He wants to go down as making America great again and keeping America great again. And if this crash happens, it's going to be a little monkey wrench in what he thinks is going to be his namesake. I'm not saying we're not supposed to vote for him because we are supposed to vote for the man. But he's human too, and he's got his little issues. So this is one of his issues. He doesn't want this to happen. He's trying to save it from happening, but it's not. It, he can't. He can't. It's like Pharaoh, you know, when Moses kept down, let my people go. Let my people go. And Pharaoh was like, okay, they can go. And the next thing, nah, they're not going. That's exactly what's happening now. It's going to crash, boom, nah. We're going to stop. It's not going to crash. It's like we're dealing with Pharaoh here. And God keeps calling things out. The bubble burst. He's saying now the bubble burst. So what's going to happen? With the, what does that mean? Things are about to play out here. But Pharaoh doesn't want to let go. The enemy doesn't want to let go. And he uses whoever. Who's ever ignorant enough, that's who he uses. Let's just keep sending the money, keep the stocks propped up there. And then, oh, that didn't work anymore. You know, they were still going down. So now let's tell the people, ah, we're going to help them. We're going to give them some money or whatever we'll do. We'll help the people out. That'll make them feel a little bit confident. So they'll go and play the stocks again and make it look good. Mm -hmm. Stocks don't mean a thing. Mm -hmm. It's what's going on behind closed doors that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So we have to be uh, very aware. Keep the prayers going. Pray all present. He is from the Spirit of God. Not from his own self. He's got a little bit of an ego, the guy. We all know that. But it doesn't mean he doesn't have love in his heart. And he does believe in Jesus. But I don't know if he gets on his knees every day. Maybe he does. And asks the Father, what's your will, Father? I don't think he does that every day. He's got a lot of people praying around him. I'm not sure where he's at spiritually. And I'm not the judge either. And neither are you. So don't judge the man. Pray for the man. I pray that he sees clearly what he needs to do to really make America not great again, but blessed again. Because when you make the country blessed by the Father, that's when she becomes great. That's when she shines her beacon of light for all the world to see. Right now, we're not this beacon of light for all the world to see because the world is looking at a very divided nation. The world is looking at a nation that absolutely murders babies. Half the countries are against abortion. Not our country. The great country of the world, right? The richest country of the world. Yeah, and we're murdering our babies every day. That's pitiful, folks. That's really, really, really bad. Very bad. And there are many, many Christians that believe abortion's okay, too. I actually saw it on the internet. Pastors saying that abortions are wonderful. It's the mercy of God. Yep. Yeah, where do they get that one from? <laughs> it's just reprobate minds. We're losing it. We're losing it in this world of chaos and demonic influence. And if we don't keep our heads straight and get the mind of Christ and listen to the Holy Spirit, we'll just fall prey to the world too. So I'm always full of sharp. And I'll be back when he sends me back again. And have a blessed night. And keep the prayers going. Because we will watch and see. I ask God every day, what's going on here? What's going on, Father? You know? When I saw the stocks go up, I'm like, what? What's going on, Lord? And I was minding my business. And boom, he just downloaded me with this. What I just told you. So pray, pray, pray. And pray more. And I'll be back when he sends me back again.
Okay, people, have to agree with this one. Have to agree with this, what she had to say here. I'm telling you, we are a sick country, sick country. We need to be on our knees. We need to be on our knees, people, fasting, praying, asking the Lord to help us get through what's coming, these things coming. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Um, I wanted to put up my, let me put up my little, my, my little thing here. I wanted to put that up. Time is running out. Time is running out. Time is running out. If you haven't given your life to Messiah Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, if you want to call him Jesus, I call him Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahushua HaMashiach. Brothers in the African nations sometimes call him the Congo, Zikongo. -Kong -Zi you know, we, we just need to be ready. We need to get ready, people. We need to get ready. I'm going to go on over here and uh, go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. Um, wow, I'm telling you, people. I got this message here like a day, a day ago or so. And I haven't had time to share it with you. I'm not going to read the whole entire chapter of, of Romans 8, but I'm going to start from um, Heirs with Christ. Heirs with Christ. Romans 8, 12, and I'm going to go down to the 38th verse, okay? Father, be with me as I read your word to the people. Let your Holy Spirit cover me. I ask that you help me uh, to teach it the way you want it taught. Uh, we know that we're in the end at the end. So we ask that your Holy Spirit wake in the hearts of the people. Let them listen to the prophets and the prophetess and the messengers and watchmen, Father. It's just so many people on the same page right now. Uh, in the end, at the end, we have so many things happening. All the pages of Revelation, Daniel, and all the old prophets are coming forth. We ask that your Holy Spirit would open up people's minds to see, to come out of their cells. Come out of themselves, as Lois just said about the president, need to come out of himself. Focus on what the Father would want done right now. And we are having too many murders, too many murders of babies. Absolutely. All these abortions, all these uh, pedophiles and rapists and attackers and Oh, just name it. It's all over the world. I can't believe mothers are killing their own children. Like in Colorado here, this woman with the case of the boy. I uh, don't know where his body is right now. And you know, I'm, I'm just saying, it's all this crime going on. Oh, Father, how can we ever, ever say we can fix America? You're the only one can fix America. You're the only one can fix people's hearts, Father, Father, to keep them from doing the things that they do. They need to go back to the Torah, go back to the commandments of God, uh, and follow you, uh, follow you consistently completely so we ask for your mercy and grace uh, as I read your word right now we ask it in the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah so let me go here now and read it heirs with Christ therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you would die but if you by the spirit you will by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live and that's the problem today. We're living by the flesh, prostitution, fornication, uh, adultery, uh, all, you know, all about me, 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 greed. Uh, you know, it's all about the flesh today here in America, a flesh today in the world. We need to be coming out of the flesh and into the spirit. And you can only get the spirit through the Messiah by giving your life to him, repentant of your sins and coming to him and say, Father, here I am. I'm a sinner. Will you fill me up with your Holy Spirit? Will you, uh, will you take away Adam's seed and put your seed inside of me and coming out of the, uh, Adam's DNA into the Father's DNA. We need to have the blood of Messiah over us today, people. So it's saying here, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. But for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself, the Spirit himself, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. That glorious day uh, when the bride, the wedding lamb, the lamb of the uh, wedding, uh, the wedding, the wedding, oh, the wedding in heaven. Oh, goodness, how wonderful that's going to be. Uh, so uh, we need to be know that we're going to be glorified together here soon. Future glory. Look at the future glory here. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
for the earnest expectation of this creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. And we are in the birth pains. We are all going, oh, it's get this time just running out. We're just going closer and closer to uh, Yeshua Messiah coming, people, where all the signs are showing. So the birth pains together, we are in right here now, and it's going more and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves growing within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were slaves in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Okay. But if we hope for what we do not see, getting back to that word faith, faith, things that, we, you know, we hope for uh, evidence of things not seen. We, we you know, it's, we always want to see, 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 but we should be hoping for those things that we can't see that's in our Father, the invisible God, whose people say, oh, that's why people are making wood, rock, and stone. You know, they got to see something. They, oh, I want to see something. Oh, I want to pet something. I want to hold something. Well, you should be giving your life to Messiah Yeshua, and he was... He will reveal himself to you. He will reveal his angels to you. He will reveal his Holy Spirit to you. He will reveal dreams and visions to you. Uh, you know, that's why we need to get out of this world, this, this world. We are in the world, but not of the world. We need to come out of the world, people. It's not about the flesh. It's not about this world, okay? So that's why he, what he's saying here. Uh, now, we, now he who searches the hearts. Oh, did I skip something here? Okay, yeah, I didn't skip it, okay. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his promise, his purpose, I mean his purpose. If you have a purpose, you, you, you should have a purpose today. You should be want, knowing why you're in this world today. Uh, what's my purpose, Father? You need to go to him and he can show you what your purpose is. You need to go to him and ask him what, what you need, what you want to do with me, Father. What, what do you want? I know I love to play golf. I love to play tennis. I love to do, but do, is this what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to do, Father? We need to always be asking him what our purpose is. And he will show us, people. He will show us. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So if he called you to his purpose, he predestined. He, he calling you, uh, he's justifying it for his glory. He's justifying it for his glory is what it's saying, for his glory. And so that's why I say it's not about me. It's not about Marner. It's not about my ministry. We all are children of the king. We should be coming together, helping one another, praying for one another. And that's why I, you see me share many people on my channel because, you know, it's not about me. It's about us working together in these end times because we're going to be, we're going to need one another. We're going to need each other people. God's everlasting love, God's everlasting love. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all, but delivered him up for us all, all of us, every creed, every race, every color, uh, all of us, okay, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? who also makes intercession for us, who shall, separate, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, uh, distress, uh, persecution, uh, famine, uh, nakedness, uh, peril, 
a sword. Oh my goodness. I was thinking about this last night. I was looking at this last night. We already in tribulation. A lot of countries having tribulation, distress all over the place. Persecution is happening all over the place. Famine uh, is coming more than ever. It's going to be coming. All the locusts are taking over in Africa and all over different parts of the world. We're going to have nakedness. A lot of people now are out of their homes, out in tents, out trying to find a rock to put their head on. They are naked. They have nowhere to go, nowhere to sleep. The homeless people is what I'm talking about. Peril, a sword. We're going to have sword. We're going to have a famine and we're going to have earthquakes. We're going to have massive things going on all around us. Tribulation cons consists of all these things. Persecution consists of all these things. Judgment in the land consists of all these things. As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loveth us. Hallelujah. We ought to be wanting to be more than conquerors through him only. We can only survive through the father. We can't do it in that within ourselves. We are, it's not about us. We have to put our trust in him, put our hand in his hand, put our hand in his hand and let him lead us, guide us, instruct us, direct us, protect us. It's all about Yeshua Messiah. So he says here, wow, wow. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus, our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. So this is why this is an important chapter here. It's talking about things we need to hear right now. And I know we need to understand we are. We are like killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But he said if, we, if he suffered for us, we should suffer with him. We should die for him as he died for us. So we shouldn't fear death. We shouldn't fear all these things coming on the earth. We should just, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in me, you just believe in the father. As he always said in the simple little John 3, 16 message that you told your children, if you did tell your children when they were young, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. I had a, a, something to share with you guys, and I didn't I forgot to bring it on here. I have to share it on my next video. Uh, my friend over in um, William, William, over one of the uh, missionary over in Uganda, he had a vision yesterday. And I meant to take it out and show it to you guys, but I forgot about it. But he uh, had a vision about the same thing, about uh, Christ coming. He said the angels uh, was there and uh, the angels were separating. The angels were separating uh, the evil from the wicked, the good from the evil, separating them, getting ready for Christ coming. So we know he's going to have a great separation. It, the sheep and the goats are being separated, always been separated more and more now than ever. So you need to be giving your life to the father. That's what's so important, giving your life to the father right now. I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I want it to be too long. I'm going to go on over here to Maranatha. Uh, and, and, and I just found this tonight. I want to share it with you to weep or to rejoice. Uh, it, it's just a wonderful thing to hear. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute it out. But I'm telling you people, we need to be getting ready, getting ready. Nothing else matters in this world. When all the earthquakes come, all the tsunamis come, when all the, uh, the volcano starts brewing everywhere and you seem like nothing is left, like if the tornadoes hit Tennessee unexpectedly and nothing's left. And I was so happy to tell you, inform you that Nikki Pratt is safe and alive and her, her daughter and her are safe and alive. So I was so happy to hear from her today because I know the father had already revealed it to me in Revelation, not Revelation, in Psalms 18, that she was fine and okay. And he took her through the storm. He took her through whatever problems she's going through. He would take her through it. And he did, he's doing that, working on her right now. And I'm telling you people, you have to trust in the father to tell you anything and everything. If you got a question in your mind, go and ask him to show you. And he will show you in this living word. He will show you in the Bible. He will show you through a friend. He will show you, he will give you a confirmation some kind of way in a dream, a vision. I don't know. He have a lot of ways he can give you confirmations, but we need to be trusting in him. People, let me go ahead and uh, mute this out and let you see this. L listen to this right now. Hold on a minute.
January 31, to weep or to rejoice. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Jeremiah 8.20 I appeal to the members of our churches not to disregard the fulfilling of the signs of the times, which say so plainly that the end is near. Oh, how many who have not cared for the salvation of their souls will soon make the bitter lamentation. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Oh, that we would remember that it is court week with us, and that our cases are pending. Now is the time to watch and pray, to put away all self-confidence, all pride, all selfishness. The precious moments that are now by many worse than wasted should be spent in meditation and prayer. Many of those who profess to be keeping the commandments of God are following inclination instead of duty. As they are now, they are unworthy of eternal life. To these careless, indifferent ones, I would say, your vain thoughts, your unkind words, your selfish acts are recorded in the book of heaven. The angels that were present at Belshazzar's idolatrous revelry stand beside you as you dishonor your Redeemer. Sadly, they turn away, grieved that you should thus crucify him afresh and put him to open shame. On Christ's coronation day he will not acknowledge as his any who bear spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but to his faithful ones he will give crowns of immortal glory. Those who would not that he should reign over them will see him surrounded by the army of the redeemed, each of whom bears the sign, the Lord our righteousness. They will see the head once crowned with thorns, crowned with the diadem of glory. In that day the redeemed will shine forth in the glory of the Father and his Son. The angels of heaven, touching their golden harps, will welcome the King and those who are the trophies of his victory, those who have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. A song of triumph will peal forth, filling all heaven. Christ has conquered. He enters the heavenly courts, accompanied by his redeemed ones, the witnesses that his mission of suffering and self-sacrifice has not been in vain. Hallelujah. It won't be in vain. It won't be in vain. Oh my God. I can't wait for that moment. I can't wait for that day. People, it's time. It's time to really pray for America. Pray for your people. Pray for your state, your country, uh, your children, your grandchildren. It, it's just time for prayer right now more than ever. We probably going to, I don't know, all the quarantines, all the things going on. We don't know if the money going to crash tonight totally. We just don't know. We got to put our trust in the Father, people, tonight. Put our father, trust in the Father every single day, I mean, every single night, every single day, every single hour. As the song say, we know not the hour. We know not the hour. And so, uh, you know, we need to just be ready, people, be ready. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm not going to stay here much longer, but I was out today uh, talking to the homeless people a little bit today. And uh, I saw a couple, they was traveling, uh, getting ready to travel back to Tennessee, uh, trying to sell some items they have to give to some of the people uh, in Tennessee who have nothing, have lost everything. Uh, so pray for Tennessee right now and the people who have lost their homes, uh, don't have nothing nowhere to go. Uh, it's just going to be more homeless people. Uh, just consider putting them in your prayers every night, uh, every day, uh, as I try to do myself, uh, praying for one another, praying for the country, praying for missing people, so many missing people. And I, I pray for them every night, lifting them up, children, old people, old people getting missing, Alzheimer's or whatever. They just get lost, uh, uh, you know, so we need to keep people in mind besides your own family. Pray for others. Pray for others out there going through their trials and their tribulations of their own, have nowhere to go. Uh, uh, we got criminals all over the place, attacking people, carjackings going on at filling stations. You just, every minute is something going on. So we need to keep the covering over us, keep the blood over our doorposts. So uh, I want to thank you for the offerings to help the homeless, orphans, widows, and those in need in mission fields. May Yahuwah Messiah, yeah, Messiah richly bless each and every one of you guys out there. Uh, you can always send your offerings in to marna.campbell at gmail.com uh, and also mail them in to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. We have a very a faithful few people that support this ministry. I don't know if it wasn't for my faithful few people. I don't know if we would be able to continually to help the homeless people or help them with anything. So continually sending your, uh, your, your monies. Uh, 
I um, really appreciate my friend in the Ocala area, my hometown area. She knows who she is. Uh, she always uh, contributing uh, $10 or whatever she can give. You know, she's not a rich person, but she contributes what she ha what she have for the homeless because she was once homeless herself. So, you know, when you've really been in a place yourself, you have more of compassion for people. But uh, we need to understand, Yeshua say, the more we give, the more we receive. So we need to give to the homeless, give to the off uh, offerings to the homeless, the widows, the homeless, uh, people out there in need, uh, people who losing their jobs, whatever it may be. We need to try to help out. That's what the haven's going to be about, helping those people in need at the time of trouble, the time of trouble that's approaching us really soon. So uh, we need to do what we can while we can. I don't know what to tell you to do. I listen to Common Sense Show mostly every night, trying to get tips of what's going on, how to prepare, what's going on. Uh, and Steve Quayle and these guys, uh, uh, preparation guys and things like that, I listen to at night. Uh, so you guys need to be just praying and watching and keep them prepared. Because if you wait till the last minute, you're going to be shocked because the grocery store shelves are fading away, fading away, people, fading away. So I'm going to go now and say, Father, be with the people watching. Uh, thank you for your love for us, your care for us. We just bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way, Father. We ask for your Holy, Holy Spirit to fall on your people. We need your, uh, you need your uh, power, Father. We really need the Holy Spirit to guide us right now, to, to lead us into all truth. Uh, and so we ask him for your latter rain to fall any time. We know it's coming soon. The two witnesses and all these things are coming soon. But it's so close, Father, to taking the chip and the mark that we don't need to take at all. We don't need to take at all. We need to put our trust totally in you. So we just thank you for being our Father, our Master, our, our just our everything, our everything, Father. So we just ask it right now that you supply the people needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. And I'm just going to say shalom, shalom and I thank you guys for watching again. Please go and make sure your households have the things you need, okay? Please. Water is really essential. You might have to get a filter, you know? Just have these things that's essential right now, okay? So uh, I'm going to go now and say good night, good night, good night, good night. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, I'm just going to say shalom, shalom. Love you guys so much. Love you guys so much.